Okay, now this is a story that for some may be a little hard to believe. <laughs> Hear me out. U.S. Navy pilots spotting UFOs, UFOs flying across the sky at hypersonic speeds. This is the United States Navy reporting this, and it's a story first reported by the New York Times. It has sparked a lot of interest and attention, so I had to get asked my questions. Of course, I bring in our top RT correspondent, John Huddy, who joins us live and now with more on this seemingly <laughs> out of the world story. Okay, John, are there little green men Martians walking the earth right now? Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me make it this to be I a little bit. I hope not. Well, I hope so too, but just, let me make it a little bit more professional. Is this really fact sure. or is this science fiction? Well, it's a fact that U.S. Navy pilots reported seeing strange objects almost daily between 2014 and 2015 off the east coast of the United States, in particular uh, off the coast of Virginia and here in Florida. Uh, they say these objects were at both high altitude levels, such as 30,000 feet and sea level. And by the way, UFO can be anything that can't readily be or, or you know, be explained, um, you know, something that is seen, but there's no explanation or there's nothing to, you know, definitively describe that. Uh, but going back to this story, in one instance, Incident, an F-18 Super Hornet pilot uh, said that he almost slammed into one of the objects, which he described as almost kind of sphere-like. Uh, and, and in that case, an official report was filed. And one of the pilots, Lieutenant Ryan Graves, who spoke to the Times about it, uh, said the object he encountered was flying at, he said, hypersonic speed. So that's in excess of 3,800 miles per hour. He said it had no visible engine or exhaust plumes and that it was doing impossible maneuvers uh, such as sudden stops and instantaneous turns, things that really modern aircraft, even you know our top fighter uh, planes and fighter jets are really unable to do, along with, he says, staying airborne for, for anywhere from 12 to 13 hours. You know, our, our you know, stealth jets, as incredibly advanced as they are, still have to refuel. So this is pretty incredible. And Lieutenant Graves reportedly said he thought that maybe at first they could be you know, commercial drones or something of that nature, but you know, really at this point, it remains unclear. And the pilots, while excited in one of the <laughs> videos from the Navy that was released, did not say the objects were extraterrestrial, but neither Lieutenant Graves nor the three other pilots, uh, apparently interviewed by the Times, wanted to speculate about exactly what they saw, Scotty. Well, of course, no one wants to speculate about what they saw if they're a U.S. Navy man. That being said, are there any True. reasonable explanations for this other than those little green men just toying with mm -hmm. U.S. Navy fighter jets? Well, yeah, and scientists, you know, look, this isn't the first time right. that pilots, whether it be commercial pilots or naval pilots, have said they've seen unidentified objects, flying objects, UFOs, in the sky. But scientists have often said that it could be something uh, related to, you know, the weather, such as, like, atmospheric effects, uh, reflections, some kind of weather phenomenon, possibly bugs in the flight input code of these jets or display systems, you know, basically something Thing, you know, earthly rather than extraterrestrial. But again, in this case, these are U.S. Navy pilots making these reports that are being investigated by the Pentagon and certainly has got the attention of the DOD, Department of Defense. They're not coming from, you know, some Yahoo in right. his backyard saying that there's a flying saucer spinning overhead and that they're about to be abducted by aliens. So, so it's definitely that something that has people's attention. And, and is certainly, if anything, intriguing, Scotty. It's, it's very Thank intriguing. And, and like you point out, this is coming from the United States Navy, so this isn't a joke. They're actually right. trying to identify it. And we don't know the drones, people there on the beach that have created their own sort of flying mechanisms. That being said, I know I brought in the right guy to find us some answers. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us, John. You're welcome. This is Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken brock the yahweh brock the yahweh shy 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 
Yahweh yeah, Bashimi, I was shy by Shimmer Kalk with Dash. Rock a dumb to the sincere. I came out there just preaching this word of sincerity and in truth. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. And as you can see, the clip that started off this video, you have Esau's media reporting on the chariots. Because the chariots of Yahweh Bashim al Shai are showing themselves on an extremely high level. And Esau can't hide the Heavenly Father's chariots. They're everywhere. You can log on YouTube and see all types of footage of the chariots of the Lord throughout the four corners of the earth. But Esau has no answers for these chariots. He's wondering what are these things? As you've seen in the clip, the Navy fighter pilots are reporting that they're seeing flying objects as they fly in the sky and they're doing things to defy the laws of physics. Flying at 3,000 miles an hour, then coming to a complete stop, staying in the air for hours without refilling. Because the chariots are spiritual vehicles, they don't operate on how Esau's vehicle operates, which are carnal vehicles. The chariots operate on pure energy. And Esau, the top elites, they know that this is how the Heavenly Father's son is going to return and what the world calls the UFO. And that they're going to be forced to fight the Lord. So they're putting these things in their media to what? Try to demonize the chariots. But I'm here to let you know that these vehicles are identifiable. They're not unidentified. They're known as the chariots of Israel and men's hearts are going to fail them for fear when the Heavenly Father releases them on the earth. This is Luke chapter 21 verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts fell in there for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Because the Heavenly Father is going to give the order for all the hosts of heaven to come down with his son Yahweh Shai to what? Take this earth over. And what they would call an alien invasion, which is not an alien invasion. It's a righteous invasion. It's the Heavenly Father's son coming back to take his glorious kingdom from you heathen. It says men's hearts fell in there for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is Psalms chapter 68 verse 17. The chariots of Yahweh Bashim Shai are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. So it says the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So these vehicles, how they call them unidentified flying objects, which they're identifiable to us. They're known as the chariots of Israel, and the scriptures say that the angels are among them. Psalm 68 and 17, the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. So these vehicles are what the Heavenly Father's angels travel in. They're known as interdimensional vehicles. They can travel from the third dimension to the fourth dimension, and from the fourth dimension back to the third dimension. They can travel between dimensions because the fourth dimension is where the Heavenly Father dwells. But these vehicles have access to both dimensions, the third dimension and the fourth. This is 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elisha went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So this story is getting into Elisha and Elijah which Elisha was the understudy of Elijah. Pretty much this story gets into how Elisha was translated and taken up into the heavens by what? The chariots. Second Kings 2 and 11, And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. So this scripture lets you know that these chariots are known as what? The chariots of Israel, the chariots of Yasharala. Yasharala meaning prince of the power, the chariots of the Israelites. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So these chariots are identifiable to us. These are our salvation, and they're known as the chariots of Israel. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying rope. So the prophet Zechariah is seeing what? A chariot. 
what the world calls a UFO, which they're known as what the chariots of Israel. They're identifiable. Then I turn and lift up my eyes and look and behold a flying row. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying row. The length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth of thereof is 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So these chariots are a curse to Esau, the so-called white men. Because when these chariots show up, they're coming to do what? Take this devil out of his rulership. They're going to aid Yahweh Shai in the destruction of this place. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as in this side according to it. How was America gained? Through rape, through robbery, and through murder. By who? The red Hebrew Edomite, the so-called white man. He killed, he slaughtered, he murdered to get this land. He stole, it says, for everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. And that's right here in America, the house of the thief, the house of the so-called white man, the man that gained this earth through rape, through robbery, through murder, the thief. So these chariots are a threat to Esau. And that's why he has something called what? The space program, which he wants to weaponize space to fight against the Lord because they know that the Heavenly Father's Son is returning from outer space. That's why you had somebody by the name of Ronald Reagan during the time of September 21st, 1987, at the United Nations, he made a speech. What he said at the United Nations, he said, perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. So pretty much he was making a statement like, wouldn't we all put our differences aside and come together if we knew that we were facing an outside threat from another world? Which that's what Esau's gonna be faced with. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's coming back to take all the crowns of all the leaders on this planet Earth. So all the nations are gonna to come together to try to fight the Lord when he returns. And they know this to be true. And not only that, they have the prophets out here through the four corners of the earth telling you what's gonna happen. And you know it's going to happen. So they're preparing to fight the Lord. It says, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. And yet I ask, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our people than war and the threat of war? Well, you are going to go to war. Because you're going to make war with the Lamb, as the scriptures say. But you're going to lose miserably. But the Heavenly Father is going to harden your hearts to fight the Lord. This is Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Which the clouds are a representation of the chariots. This is Psalms 104 and 3. Who lay up the beams of the chambers in the waters, who make up the clouds his chariots, who walk up upon the wings of the wind. So the chariots, like we read in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12, Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So these chariots, the clouds, are known as what? The chariots of Israel. So they're coming for what? The salvation of the righteous of the elect and the destruction of the wicked of the earth. And that's how Yahweh Shai is coming with all the holy host of heaven and the chariots of Israel. So they're identifiable. So Esau, close your UFO research program and watch the videos because we're telling you what you're up against. You're going to fight against the Heavenly Father, Son, and the angels. These ain't no little green men with big eyes and big heads and long legs. These are the angels of the Lord. Big, strong black men, angry looking black men coming back with power and great glory right along with his son, Yahweh Shai, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords leading the charge. And he said in Isaiah 47 and 3, he would not meet thee as a man. So he ain't going to meet you like he did 2,000 years ago, where you were able to pierce his flesh. He's coming back as a power, an angelic force. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, 
both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight, which is talking about Yahweh Shai. After he arose from the dead, he was with his disciples, raising them up to be the apostles. But he was taken away from them and what a cloud, just how Elisha was taken away and what the chariots of Israel. Like we read in Psalms 104 and 3, he make of the clouds his chariots. So we know that the cloud is talking about the chariots of Israel. Acts 1 and 9, and when he had spoke these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received them out of their sight. Acts 1 and 10, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This saying Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So Yahweh Shai is coming back just as he left. And what? The chariots. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. So the heavenly father's place is the fourth dimension. So the heavenly father is going to send his son from the fourth dimension to the third dimension. It says, for behold, the Lord come out of his place, the fourth dimension, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The inhabitants of the earth dwell in the third dimension. The earth is in the third dimension. So the chariots are going to come from the fourth dimension to the third dimension to what? To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The Heavenly Father set up different laws, statutes and commandments, different ways that you're supposed to live on his earth. And his laws, statutes and commandments are being broken on an everyday basis. Sin is everywhere. So the Heavenly Father's Son is coming to correct this earth. I Meaning he's going to take the man of sin off the earth. Which is who? You so-called white people. Which are known as the Red Hebrew Edomites. That's your biblical nationality. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So the Heavenly Father is going to bring recompense for the judgment that he brought on his people through you. The Heavenly Father used you on the left hand side to punish his people. But he's going to use his son on the right hand side to punish you for what you did to his people. And he can do whatever he wants to because he's the Heavenly Father. He can use the nation to bring judgment to his people and then use his people to bring judgment right back to that nation. The Heavenly Father is going to do his will, his pleasure. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, which the right horse represents the chariots. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, which is Yahweh Shai, because he's coming on top of the chariot. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So he's going to make war with you nations in righteousness, because everything on this earth is saturated in wickedness. And he's a righteous power coming to bring righteousness to a world based upon wickedness. So that means what? He's going to do a lot of killing when he returns. And this is your biggest threat. Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him is called faithful and true, which is Yahweh Shai, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So it says his eyes were as a flame of fire because we all know the Heavenly Father's son, when he was on the earth, likes to drink a lot of wine, which turns your eyes red. And it says on his head were many crowns because he's coming back to take the crowns of all you leaders on the earth, meaning he's going to take your leadership, take you out of your rulership. He's going to take down the Russian Empire. He's going to take down the Chinese Empire. He's going to take down the Philippine Empire. He's going to take down the Arab Empire. You for damn sure gonna take down the Edomite Empire, you so-called white people. You the number one on this hit list. Pursuing the Isaiah the 63rd chapter. So he's coming back to reclaim his kingdom on the earth and take you nations out of your rulership. And that's why Ronald Reagan made that speech. He said, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. So pretty much he's saying, look, all the differences that we have, we're going to put that aside. Would we put that aside if we knew we were facing an alien threat? Somebody that's coming to take us all out? And that's what you nation are going to do when Yahweh Shai returns. You're going to stop fighting each other because Yahweh Shai is going to come in the midst of World War III. 
you're going to stop fighting each other and turn to fight the Lord. Revelation 19 and 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. He's clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, meaning he's coming back to do a lot of killing. He's going to put a lot of people to death, because this world is based upon wickedness, and wicked must be taken out. Revelation 19 and 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, which are talking about what the angels coming back with him in the chariots, cloth and fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth of a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, which is talking about them laser beams coming out them chariots, smite new nations, turn you into power, as the vision as Ezra saw in the 13th chapter of the book of 2nd Ezra. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierce and wrath of the almighty Yahweh, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's Yahweh Shai, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's coming to take you Edomites and all you heathen nations out of your rulership. And that's why you're putting out these news clips of the chariots because they're showing themselves. As we get closer to the end, the Heavenly Father's chariots are going to show themselves on a way high level. And Esau's getting scared. But there's nothing you can do. Stop your research program. Stop all that. Just watch the videos. We're telling you what you're facing. Just get ready to face the Heavenly Father's Son. That's all you got to do. Which you are getting ready to fulfill prophecy. This is Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. So everybody on the planet earth is going to see the return of Yahweh Shai, his second coming on the earth. And they also which pierced him. The soldiers that pierced him when he was on the cross 2,000 years ago, they're going to see him because they're back in the reincarnation. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, so it be true. So everybody's going to wail because they know that when Yahweh Shai returns, it's for their destruction. Now the scriptures also say, when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So it's twofold. Now on one hand, the earth is going to wail, but on another end, the elect are going to what? Give praises and glory to Yahweh by Shemel Shai because we know our redemption draweth nigh. Our salvation is nearer than what we believe. Because when Yahweh Shai returns, he's coming back with what? Healing in his wings to heal the elect and the one third. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We shall meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And scriptures also say we shall be changed. We're going to be changed out of this corruptible flesh. And we're going to receive extraterrestrial incorruptible flesh. The new bodies. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with a bunch of gifts for the righteous. And a bunch of death and destruction for the wicked. So with that I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rekal Kodash. Shalom. Go, 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 go!